a claim of right, an administrative procedure. The rest, for right or for wrong, will be up to you and how you stand and how you speak. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that, Frank. Uh, I'm going to go to the phone lines real quick. We have Idaho on the phone. Hello, Frank. Hi. Hello, Frank. Hi. Hi, can I hear you? This is John from North Idaho. I'm a friend of Ron and a friend of Greg. Hi, John. Well, I'm calling to kind of give a, a little update. I was the one that called in about uh, Dr. Fine's uh, discovery about the Los Angeles County judges getting some money from the from the county. Yes. And I've had a case for the last three years, unfortunately, in, down in Southern California in, in Los Angeles County. And everything I tried procedurally and all that, um, it was a very nasty probate and conservatorship case where my brother uh, lied, did my, lied to my mom, lied to the court, forged documents, committed perjury, all that. But uh, that was uh, not to be changed. Uh, had a court system and a, and a judge, actually judges that uh, would not hear or listen to anything. Uh, that was several years ago. They brought it up uh, against me in Idaho with a foreign judgment. And after hearing about Dr. Fine's uh, issue of the judges being paid and following you since December, uh, listening to everything, uh, what I have to say based on my experience, one, first of all, I want to thank you immensely, Frank, for what you have done uh, with one, having the information that you put out, the talks that you talked about just today about the fear that is what you are, to use your words, you are spot on. They are using that immensely. And to overcome that, I appreciate what you did last week and the week before about prayer. To use those mindsets to overcome their tools, their powers, as is immense. You've been on competence since day one, and you are absolutely right. I, even though I, I know without a doubt I've always been right, so to speak, but my experience has been through the court systems, it's never been about right or merit, even though there's Supreme Court cases and cases from every state about everything should be decided upon the merits. It is, in my experience, with the courts, it's all about procedure. And you nail it when you say competence. So to learn the right procedures, uh, to learn rhetoric, to learn these things that are absolutely essential to, to gain victory. So to, to make a long story short, what I basically did once I found out, I sent some of the presiding judges over my case, not the actual judge, but the presiding judges over the local court and of all of the Los Angeles courts and all of the California courts, so letters basically saying, hey, this is what's going on. This is after I checked to see if those presiding judges had also received money. And, well, sure enough, they had. So I basically said, okay, this is a little notice saying, gee, I'm aware of it. Here's a copy of the email from the auditor. Uh, this needs to, to go away. And let's follow the law. Let's do what is right. Uh, the county uh, judges void the judgment, give me what is mine by right and by, by law. And I just had a hearing literally yesterday morning down in uh, California, flew back yesterday, and I had given the uh, court the, the motion for a, a new hearing a month ago judge was very, very different. A month ago when I, even the papers when he first saw it, he was different in that hearing, but it, it was a different related matter, but he, he had saw what the, the papers were about. I did a motion for disqualification. I was trying to follow what the, the competence of what uh, Dr. Fine had, had, had put in, in his paperwork, but basically letting them know that I knew what their, their game was, what the game was, was about. And this last time, very, very different. Uh, judge treated me with respect. He'd never done that before, ever. And I came across um, 
it was a, a, a cattle call of a hearing. There were probably 100 different cases to be heard within three hours. Probably 20 of them were for continuances. I had maybe five to 10 minutes. Um, I had hoped for something of a more of a true hearing, but I, I knew that was was not to be once it's all the, the cattle call for a hearing, but uh, that's what I had been, been, been expecting. But he was very, very different. Asked me repeatedly, is that all the information that I needed to, to present? He was kind, he was patient. But in the paperwork that I had, had given him, I uh, quoted a, a case site that Dr. Fine had put in his paperwork about exactly what was going on. And this is the first time he had ever mentioned that he read the papers. Mm. In all the other cases, basically, you know, I, I've printed out volumes. I've, I've killed a forest of, of trees in the paperwork I've, I've slayed, slayed them on. <laughs> but they have never read anything. They really didn't care. It was, mm. It's irrelevant. My experience is, at least with the judges I have been in, in front of, it's, I'm slowing down their, their process, their business. Mm. First thing out of his mouth is, I have read your paperwork. And then when I was going into it, he mentioned three times this one particular case that I quoted from Dr. Fine's work where basically it was saying, oh, they had, the county had tried to get the payments to be cleared legally. Uh, they were denied. They appealed it. The appeal uh, was denied. This was So what was the outcome for you in the end? Um, he basically accepted everything. The, the opposing party was silent. They didn't have anything to say. It was kind. I asked him, when will your decision may, be made? This is unfortunately afterwards. I mean, he was quick, close it out. He yep. had never let me speak afterwards before he let me, let me speak. And he said, uh, I will uh, be working on this and get the decision out as soon as I possibly can. He never said anything like that ever before. Hmm. Well, it's great. It's great news, and look, I, I really appreciate it, and I'm glad you took the time to, to share it. I mean, I spoke with someone the other day, and we were talking about foreclosures, and I said, "Look, when you get into, and, and I know that people are waiting to see these tools in the canon law, but when you start to see the tools of logic, one of the things to remember is when you follow the everything and the kitchen sink model of of defence, then that 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 sink that you didn't clean, that weak bit, is the very thing that a smart lawyer will use to throw everything else out. Because in logic, if I can find one defect, sorry, I'll grab this one sec. I'll be one sec, guys, one sec, sorry. Hello, can you hear me? I sure can. Sorry about that. I just uh, I was closing the door, but I just had someone picking up because we're moving. So one sec, one sec. <laughs> So just that, you know, that, that your story reminded me of the thing about the logic that what, what lawyers have been doing on this issue of competence is people have gone and thought through, take foreclosures. You know, we've got QCIP numbers, we've got, uh, we've got um, conversion under tort law, we've got all these things that they're doing. People are writing these huge defences and uh, the lawyers are picking up the two or three weirdest parts of it and simply saying it's irrelevant and getting it thrown out. And the judges are just agreeing. So the point I made is if I was trying to save my home, 
I wouldn't wait until it's foreclosure. I would immediately lodge a statement of claim. I would put in the uh, decree of nullity, the revocation of powers of attorney, everything to kill the argument of the bank that you agreed on the application that they could convert. And then I would go for one thing and one thing only. I'd go after the bank on conversion. Now, what you've just said to me, and what I hope we can get through on the other things, is that competence and logic and rational, you realise that in their system and procedure, one issue, one argument, one defence, one process. Yeah? Yes. And what we've been doing is one issue, one court case, five arguments. <laughs> or a dozen arguments. <laughs> Yep. Oh, well, John, is that it for right now? Or thank you for sharing that and from that story. That's uh, that's really. Uh, well, I want to offer a little bit more uh, hope for everybody else to definitely do their due diligence, uh, do their the research. What I found out about my judges up here, um, the judge that, that has my case, it's not applicable to my case, but you can go to the Secretary of State's website because the judges are state constitutional officers. I found out the judge in my case is campaign treasurer for the last election that he was elected at was the county prosecutor. He's also had the sheriff contribute to his campaign. Uh, dozens of other attorneys, but also other judges have contributed to his campaign. Thus, anybody that has a criminal case before the, the judge I have in, in Idaho, because the county prosecutor was his campaign treasurer, that would be an automatic recusal and uh, have to be uh, avoided of, of the judgment. So, again, for anybody that's got court cases, do their due diligence. Find out all you possibly can. Use the Internet. Go to the, the county uh, offices. Find out all that you possibly can about, about these guys and what the process is and who's, who's contributing money, at least what's on the record. Find out. Do, do the best that you can. Show your, your competence, and then come on in there and basically use the, use the logic. Absolutely. Well, they don't. They don't think anyone's looking and paying attention or doing their due diligence to, to, uh, to find out what's going on behind the scenes and what they're doing, what they're actually up to, the trusts and the campaigns and, you know, conflicts of interest that they're involved in. No, so, they, they really aren't. I have a an acquaintance down in uh, southern Idaho named Gail. She found out. She found the Q September for her case. Uh, the, the bond that was sold, she found out that it was bought by the judge of her case. Yeah, you have to watch out. Even the wives of the judges will do that. Well, John, thank you. That that helps. Uh, I'm sure that helps everyone very, very much. Um, let us get back to some other questions. And uh, if you have anything else come to mind, um, put it, put yourself back in the queue. Great. Thank you. Thank you, John. Sure. All right, we have uh, Ron real quick and the phones, and we've got more questions on the chat that we'll get back to. Ron, are you there? I'm here. Is uh, Frank there? Right. I think Frank fell off the line. Where did he go? He's gone. You're right. Huh. All right, hang on. Let me see. So he, uh, I'm, I've got Skype up, and he... He uh, evidently went offline or something happened to his connection. He'll be back hopefully in a moment. Um, well, did you have something you wanted to share with everyone or? Nothing really to share other than, um, you know, Frank throws out these uh, these books like the, the Book of the Green Rays and Positive Law and stuff like that. Well, I've converted right. those into um, PDF downloads and they're at the – University of Eucadia under download section. They'll just just go down and look for the books, and then they can be downloaded complete there. Yes, yes. And the lot, Journey of UCA is now there for everybody's information. Very good. All right, uh, Frank, are you back? I'm back. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> I thought I thought that was you, and I, and I got your note here in Skype, and I saw that you had. 
got bumped off. 